Hello everyone, and welcome to the 250th episode of the Capes and Lunatics podcast. I am Phil, you know Lilith, you know Charlie, but as promised, we have a big name tonight. We've been hunting him down for a while, and we, fi- we finally gave in. You, if, you re- if you read Marvel Comics right now, you know this man, uh, Mr. Jed McKay. Hello, sir. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Thank you for joining <laughs> us. Our very special guest star! Yay! Oh, thank, thank, you, uh, thank you for having me on. Uh, all right, my first question. You seem very knowledgeable in uh, Marvel lore, so were you a, like a comics fan before you started working at Marvel? No, I, I'd never heard of them before. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I, I, like I came up here in college. It's like it's how I learned how to read. My uh, my dad was a comics guy through the seventies and uh, you know through the nineties when I was you know a youth. Uh, I was you know, always rereading his old comics. So yeah, I. I my, my comics pedigree goes uh, goes pretty far back as it as it is. Oh, nice! So, was your dad a Marvel or a DC guy? Or uh, was he did, eclectic? Well, he was eclectic. Uh, he was uh, you know, one of the sort of the earlier guys who were on the you know follow the creator, don't follow the character sort of thing. So, you know, he was following you know specific artists. Well, I would say specific artists and writers. It was specific artists and. Um, as things turned out, it was mostly Marvel. Uh, you know, there's still you know, big Kirby guys. So I've got all like the, you know, the fourth world DC Kirby stuff. Um, and then, you know, just various stuff, you know, Stranko, Shield stuff, um, you know, Glacy, uh, Master Kung Fu stuff, Barry Winter Smith, uh, Conan stuff, uh, just kind of all, all the artists that you really like, you always, you know, follow, you know, Trinky Hulk. Uh, and that was all the stuff that I grew up on. Hmm. So when you were a kid, you're reading these books, and I'm sure you were fantasizing about your books that you you wanted to tell. Um, are you telling the stories now that you fantasized about as a kid? Were you thinking of Moon Knight Tales then, or were you know, or is there still that Everest for you out there in the distance that oh, I cannot wait till I get to write my ambush bug story? Or <laughs> yeah, you hit the nail on the head there. I just, I just, just Count down the minutes for that ambush bug series. Uh, <laughs> no, not really. Um, it's funny that when I was younger, I didn't really think about working with you know, established IP, like you know, Marvel characters, DC characters. Um, at the point where I decided that I wanted to make comic books myself, I was very much in the camp of wanting to do like you know, my own creator own thing, with my own indie thing, because I think you know I would have been probably around 15, 16 or so. And I just really gotten into, you know, indie comics and both, you know, older black and white explosion stuff and then more current stuff you're seeing from uh, in the Dark Horse and what have you. So for the longest time, that was what I considered to be the thing that I wanted to do. It's just, I was, well, I was going to write and I was going to draw my own, kind of create my own stuff. Uh, it became r- rapidly apparent that I wasn't fast or good enough to, to draw my own comics. It would take about a year and you get a really, Get like one really shitty issue out of it, so um, that was not really going to be an option. And yeah, it wasn't until years later that it kind of rolled down that uh, I ended up working in you know the the shared universe, shared IP, uh, superhero stuff. Uh, so there are there are, for instance, sort of superhero stories with existing characters that I've thought about in the past and kind of you know taken notes down and kind of plotted out as a mental exercise, but that was all stuff that was done like within my 20s, uh, you know, through my 30s, as opposed to, uh, you know, uh, my, my treasured idea for Alpha Flight from when I was eight or something. <laughs> <laughs> as opposed to my treasured idea for Alpha Flight when I was 25, which yes. still got the document, so we'll see. That. Well, you know, you, 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 you hope that you, there's still both great stories, but you want to evolve in the time that you went from eight to 20. I mean, it's honestly, it's less than you'd think. It's quite disappointing. Okay, okay, that was going to be one of my questions later on, but I guess I'll drop it now. So, is is the answer Alpha Flight? Because I, I was going to ask, is there a character or a team of characters that you've never written before that you would like to, you know, you would like the chance to write on a monthly basis? Yeah, I mean, like, I love an Alpha Flight book. I've, I've made no secret of it. You know, I'm Canadian. It's the only Canadian superhero to me. And, uh, you know, I've I, I, I love Alpha Flight. I think it's hilarious that Alpha Flight went like 155 issues or something, which in today, by today's standards is completely insane for, 
even a B-list character or a B-list team. Yeah. Uh, like, you ever see, like, an X-Force team go 155 ish <laughs> level of fucking alpha play. <laughs> um, but, anyway, I'm, and I'm well aware, like, I've, I did, I was, you know, lucky enough to work on alpha play last time they brought it in for the, uh, the alpha play one, anthology one shot that, uh, me and Zub and, uh, Ed Brisson wrote. And, uh, I mean, the long and the short is that the alpha play just doesn't sell. Nobody buys alpha play. <laughs> It does okay in Canada, and you know, it sounds like dog shit in the U.S., so it kind of is what it is. I don't know for flight. I can't. Yeah, well, so do I. I know. But unfortunately, there's not 400,000 more of us. <laughs> they, need, they need to put, it, put an X. <laughs> put an X on it somewhere. It'll sell. It'll sell. Put an X on it. I mean, I remember when they announced Guardians of the Galaxy. I was like, are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy and not Alpha Play. Like, come on. You know, this is like back, what, year of like 2013 or something, you know? Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, I was saying, I was like, I cannot believe this. Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> that means there's room, though. Huh? I mean, there's hope. Got a TV show out there. I know. Happens. I know. And, you know, because me and I got a TV show, I got a me and I comic book. So it's really just kind of going back and forth. So you can run about us. Oh, was that was that the whole conversation? They're like, "Hey, we got a show coming up. We need you to create a Moon Knight comic." Well, I mean, like the reason there was a, a new comic coming out is if you have a show coming out, you want yeah, oh yeah, to have your have a comic out. It just makes sense. Same reason I had a Taskmaster series, just because Taskmaster was in Black Widow. You know, was there any similarity between the movie and the book? No, because I no. didn't know what was in the movie. Because why would they tell me? <laughs> Similarly, people say, "Oh, like, what, what's the inside scoop on Moon Knight the TV show?" I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just some I'm an idiot here in Maritime Canada. So you don't know if those are actually Von Doom cupcakes? <laughs> I have no idea about anything. I mean, all I, all I know is like the cape was this, and that's it. Like I'm good. I'm happy. Um, I was gonna ask you, were there any editorial mandates for your Moon Knight book? Because I see like kind of straight away from the DID and everything. Was that your call, or was that like an editorial thing? Yeah, like there were some editorial mandates in that they didn't have a like fully defined direction of where they wanted to go with the new, new Moon Knight series. Because when Moon Knight was being put together, I was not the only person who was pitching on. Uh, no, I got an email from Tom Brevoort. He said we're looking to put together a Moon Knight series, but I don't really know what I want it to look like yet. So I've asked a few people what sort of ideas they have, and I was one of them. I was thinking I've got a few things I wanted to put out there. Like we want to, we don't want to focus on the ID. We don't want to focus on Conchu and uh, you know the, the mysticism angle because both of those things are kind of like enormous black holes that sort of just kind of like suck the plot right into them. Yeah. So it's not it's not that saying that these things no longer exist in the knight's character or like in his sort of orbit, but for the first you know first big arc where we're establishing this series, we want it not to be anchored on either of those two things, which is why you know you see the knight as as we have now, where it's it's about his it's about his struggle certainly, but it's not about his struggles with the ID. It's not about his struggles with Kanchu, or not directly. I think uh, instead. In, sorry, go ahead. Oh, uh, sorry. I was gonna say no. I think you struck a good medium where it's like you know some writers would just ignore stuff, but you're like, okay, no, Age of Kanchu, everything happened, but you know we're kind of gonna kind of focus on something else for a while. And I love the vampire stuff. So did you do that intentionally? So we will get that Dracula scene eventually. I mean, that, that Dracula scene will not happen. I've, I've been very open about that. Uh, you know, as I've, I've, I've got a lot of affection from Moon Knight Corps. They've been very kind to me. But at the same time, you know, the, the moment you start pandering to people... You don't want to, you don't want to perpetuate like, sort of that stereotype? I mean, you know, pe- people have a lot of fun. It, I, it's, it's a great meme. But, uh, like, you know, pandering is not going to do you any favor. No. So here's a question. Um, and I, I, I do wonder. Uh, now, obviously, in Reckoning War, they just blew up the moon. Mm-hmm. And you know that becomes an item for Moon Knight mm-hmm. in the storyline. Um, do they tell you about that? And do you think like, okay, how does that affect Moon Knight in the books I'm going to be writing, or is that a surprise to you? Uh, I mean, I knew the, the moon was being blown up. Uh, you know, I attend the the Marvel, well, now virtual summits where everyone kind of gets together and says, "Here's what's happening in our books. Here's you know where various characters are at." Uh, here's what needs to be taken into account if you're doing, if you want to have this character in the book, etc. Um, so I did know <laughs> was blowing up. 
I, I saw it in the um, they sent out kind of like a, a agenda of events ahead of time, trying to get everybody um, up to speed before we started talking, so we didn't waste all of our time just info dumping it with exposition. So I did see that. And I just thought shit. Uh, but ultimately, you know, we we talked about it, and I was like, oh, okay, so it's not really something I need to concern myself with in the night the book because we don't have a uh, a reckoning war tie-in. Or you don't have a reckoning war crossover plan for Moon Knight because you know we just did Devil's Reign tie-in in the main series. We've got Devil's Reign and Moon Knight uh, next month. By next month, I mean like two weeks, week and a half. So ultimately, it was just not something I wanted to address in the main book. So you know, Dan had his scene with Moon Knight in uh, uh, was it Fantastic Four? Was it? Yeah, yeah, Fantastic, yeah, Fantastic yeah. Four. Um, and that's fine. Like that's that's Moon Knight's deal because. Like I said, we were still dealing with the Devil's Reign stuff, and ultimately Devil's Reign is just kind of like a more organic tie-in for the main series than something like uh, yeah. Reckoning War is. Which, I mean, obviously I'm not I'm not trying to cast any aspersions or shade on Reckoning War, but it's just a much bigger story than we're talking in Moon Knight, which is a much more kind of, you know, spooky street level, as opposed to here's the greater cosmic universe and things are going, you know, buck wild. When it when stuff like that happens, where like a Devil's Reign and a Reckoning War are going on at the same time, do you kind of get to pick which which uh, event you you fit into better and maybe do a crossover with? Uh, not really. Um, basically, with Devil's Reign, I got an email from Tom. I said, uh, "So so Moon Knight's getting his ass whipped in uh, Devil's Reign one." I'm like, "Oh, okay, cool." He's like, "So we're going to do a, a Devil's Reign one shot with Moon Knight where he's in prison." I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Because it makes a lot of sense. Like, it's yeah. very much a Moon Knight story. And as we're going to see in, like, a week and a half, this is, like, some real Moon Knight stuff. You know, we're talking about violence. We're talking about, um, not mental health as we, as, as we speak about it, disorders, but mental health is in, if you're a person with a background of being a violent vigilante, putting you in prison is not the world's best thing for your mental health, uh, kind of situation. So, I mean, it's, it's all really Moon Knight stuff. So it works great. And at the same time, I thought it presented a really interesting opportunity for Moon Knight number eight to be an issue that is not about Moon Knight, where we had Hunter's Moon taking over the, the sort of role of the, the protector of his territory. And, you know, I thought it worked out really well. It was a lot of fun to kind of show people a different slant on things, show people how a different, uh, the, the other excellent twist of Kanchi we have in this series does. I mean, yeah, I, I think, really uh, like Hunter's Moon, I have to say that. Oh, I yeah. Think as, a, as a character, he is just. It's it, it's such a great take on um, how any kind of uh, cult of Kanchu might exist, mm-hmm. and how you know it. You know, I mean, not not to get too 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 weird here, but it kind of just reminds me of like you know Catholic versus versus Orthodox, uh, you know, popes and and leaders in the church. I mean, like, like you're you're not far off in that. I mean, Moon Knight is currently is very much a schismatic priest of Kanchu. Whereas uh, Hunter's Moon represents much more orthodox and like or- orthopraxic kind of uh, way of you know representing Kanchu. It's me again the fist of Kanchu as a priest of Kanchu. Um, so yeah, like you know, I, I have described that Mark as a, as a heretic. I've described him as, as schismatic because that's very much what we're looking at here: these, these divisions in faith, these splits in faith based on interpretations of orthodoxy or or orthopraxy, as the case may be. Well, okay, so yeah, so you've been written now on these issues of Moon Knight already. What's your favorite aspect of the whole Moon Knight thing? Um, that's tough to say. I mean, I think the kind of, I think the thing I like the most about Moon Knight is he is a character that you can write, and you don't have to justify why people are afraid of him because he like through this series you see a guy who's trying to be better and who's trying to. Um, you know, make up for his past mistakes. But he's also not, he's also someone who's not afraid to leverage his reputation in order to get things done. And I think that it's just, it's a lot of fun to work with. Because like you, you can't, you can't do that with Spider-Man. Like yeah, yeah. Like Spider-Man has moments where he's like really intimidating and like gets up and people's grills. But like people, heroes and villains are afraid of Moon Knight. And they have absolutely good reason to be. Because Moon Knight has done some like horrible, heinous shit in the past. You mean, you mean like cut a man's face off? Cut a man's face off. He used to, used to spend his nights carving names into people's heads. Like he's he's got such a checkered past that 
bringing that up as an intimidation technique is uh, it, it, it's, it's a lot of fun because there's not a lot of characters you do that with. If, you know, Wolverine, who's basically Freddy Krueger, sure, you can do that with him. The Punisher, who is the world's most successful mass murderer, sure, you can do that with him. But like beyond those two, if you're stretched a little thin on the ground. And then you got Moon Knight, who is a guy who runs around in a white outfit relieving people of their facial features. <laughs> I love that. So what's them to see him coming? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. Getting back. Uh, and okay, again, so let's, oh. let's shift. Oh, I'm sorry. I was okay. going to say, which is. Gonna... Oh, what? Oh, I was going to shift gears to Black Cat. Okay, okay, yeah. Let's, yeah, let's shift to Black Cat. Because I do think that is kind of an interesting. You know, I, I don't want to say diametrically opposed character, um, but is definitely different. a completely different vibe and feel and and, sure. and, and a being from Moon Knight. Um, yeah, absolutely. You know, you know, she has a she has a crew. She has an incredible crew who is so loyal to her. <laughs> you know, they put up a lot. You know, and honestly, I was doing some research into like Black Cat and like. Those guys are like from like her very earliest appearances. Yep. Yeah, you know. They, they first and appeared in the same issue as she did. I know, and I well, love that. His homework. Yeah, that you brought them back, and there they are, and they're still like you know, yeah, we're a crew, and the crew is the crew, and and I love that. It's you know, it's it's interesting because you know you can even look at it in, to 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 it into the Disney universe. It's like that that Mandalorian versus Jedi path. It's like, is it about the crew or is it about that? walking that path to enlightenment. <laughs> um, and I love that. And I just love how much, you know, even though she is the black cat, there's so much life and joy in it. And, you know, you really write the black cat in such a beautiful and exciting way that never feels pandering. And I, I mean, do look... She hasn't met Dracula yet, so... <laughs> Oh, no. she, ha- she could say, where's my book, money, Dracula? He, I he was, he was in the first issue. She would just steal from him. She could ask for it. I mean, the Black Fox stole from him in uh, Black Hat number one. Yeah, you know. But, Dracula, but, but, I, I'm, I'm still not that impressed by Dracula. I'll be <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're missing out. You're missing out. <laughs> Jed, that is when you became a household name around here. Is I just remember that Black Hat number one, that... That started it. That's like one of the few books that all three of us every week when we come to the table here, we're just like, did you read Black Hat? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, we were all in on it, you know, and yeah, mostly we were just like, oh, yeah, we read Black Hat. Yes, it was great. So, uh, some good news today again. Wait, what happened? Oh. What happened today? They, uh, they announced uh, a new mini, Iron Cat. Oh, that was, I saw the, I saw the, I saw the image, but I didn't, uh, yeah. Oh, nice. She got her armor back? What's going on here? I didn't hear. This is news. I saw the yeah. image. Oh. Well, basically, uh, somebody's got the armor. And, uh, Felicia and uh, Tony Stark have to figure out what's going on. Oh. Five, five issues starting in June. Awesome. Pair Perez think, doing the art. I think they're going to make a great team, honestly. Mm. Yeah, it's uh, it's a lot of fun. I'm looking, um, you know, the, the first issues and the art's coming in. And, uh, it's all it's, it's, it's exciting. Because originally Iron Cat, well, what eventually became Iron Cat the series, was going to be the next arc of Black Cat when it got cancelled, so that had to go in the back pocket. Ooh, tomato, tomato. Yeah. <laughs> I was the book that keeps on getting cancelled, but also, also always keeps on getting cancelled. Well, like, exactly. 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 <laughs> you know, it's one, one life after another. Well, I know we also yeah. we also love the Mary Jane Black Cat one shot, so we, we were wondering if that could be a somewhat permanent thing, or at least a miniseries some, at some point also, because we love those two teamed up. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Uh, I was really pleased that uh, we got CF back to the issue because, I mean, CF really made uh, such an imprint as, like, the black cat artist. He's He's got such a good grasp on what's funny, but also what's, you know, like, real emotion and, and character acting and then just action and, like, moving around. Like, his figures just move like crazy. It's amazing. So, yeah, that was, it was great to team up with uh, CF on that again. But yeah, that's the other thing I want to bring up with you. I'm glad that the uh, Iron Cat thing's coming up because, uh, yeah, just like her, you know, her encounter, you know, her getting one over on, I mean, Johnny Storm, one thing, but like Doctor Strange and like even getting over on Tony Stark. I mean, you never come out and say it, but I mean, is it in your mind? Is Felicia basically, I don't know how high of an IQ she has, but maybe a little smarter than the average person. So, and people just underestimate her because of the cat suit. I don't know. I mean, the thing with Felicia is that. 
Like, I don't know what she got in her SATs, but she's extremely specialized. Like, she's extremely good at what she does. And anything that she that's outside of what she does, she doesn't really give a shit. So, like, you know, she's not going to be doing complex algebra, but she can crack a lock, you know, before you can sneeze. And she's extremely good at stealing things and, you know, cross the distance from point A to point B to where point B is the thing she has to steal. So she's someone who is very good at what she does and doesn't really care about anything. Um, which, you know, we see in that, in her interpersonal relationships in that she has sort of a disastrous love life for her entire character appearance because the only thing she's good at is stealing things. And unfortunately, that doesn't tie into stealing hearts. Well, maybe it ties into stealing hearts, but sort of tied to keeping it. <laughs> there you go. I still say her and Batrock are the perfect couple, but that's just me. <laughs> oh. No, he's going to flash forever! Get out, Charlie! Not on my watch. He's uh, a homebody! I think you guys have got a fan of the Zubas there. Oh, no, wait. Eddie Brock had the Zubas. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I'm still, I'm still thinking of that uh, Felicia and Flash kind of workout outfit thing. Oh! <laughs> it was a real look. That 90s, th- yes, fashion, yeah. We covered that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I mean, wasn't that the one look where Flash literally had a shirt with a arrow that was pointing straight down to his crotch? That is the one, sir. Yes. But I mean, like, is that a character for Flash? Oh, no, no, that's very on brand, no. Especially 90s Flash, no. (laughs) But, uh, and I just, again, you do your homework, and I love, I mean, I never would have thought of it, but, like, it's the perfect connection, her and the Black Fox. I'm like, who's done anything with the Black Fox in the last 20 years? But the connection makes complete sense. That's actually one I can't take credit for. Um, oh. I had, when I was setting up my um, outlines for my first run, uh, I talked about bringing in Felicia's mentor, who was going to be a character, new character I made up, and uh, Nick Spencer and Nick Lowe oh. were talking about it. And they said, well, why don't you use the Black Fox? I was like, well, I don't know who that is, but sure. So I looked at the character, and I'm like, no, actually, this is perfect. Like, yeah. This is completely ideal. Because, you know, he's, he's, he's a character, what, two generations removed. From, you know, modern, uh, relevant thievery. But he's also a character that no one's ever taken seriously. Like, the Black Fox has always been a joke. So, bringing him in and proving that he is not a joke, I think was, is one of those things that, you know, I, I, I love to take credit for this. That I think every comic writer does. And that's one I really wish I could take credit for because, uh, you know, I think I did a good job with putting the character in the series. Oh, yeah. But that, that original idea coming from Nick, Lowe, and Spencer, uh, like, it's it's the perfect idea. It just it was like the final puzzle piece that we needed to make that work. Oh, yeah. I mean, you actually made him a capable character because, like you said, before that, he would show up in a Spider-Man comic, try to steal something, and when Spider-Man goes to catch him, I'm old, don't punch me in the face. Yeah, he's like, oh, you wouldn't hit me, <laughs> If you hit me, I'll die. I'll go be murder. <laughs> but isn't that the perfect <laughs> cover? <laughs> Well, not actually covers. I mean, how actually... often have we seen the female villain say, "You wouldn't hurt a lady, would you?" <laughs> yes, That's the entire reason they introduced Batgirl. It's like I can hit a lady, and you know this is I the know, idea. It's also funnier to say, "If you hit me, I'll die," and we'll do murder. <laughs> but I think, I think that's from with me and I, so uh, I'm sort of <laughs> tagging it. So, uh, but I mean, just. The... Again, that would be Moon Knight, Black Cat. That would be enough to like, you know, rest your laurels on. But it's like, then you do Death and Doctor Strange, and I'm just like, oh, I wasn't even here for Death and Doctor Strange. I read it, I'm like, oh crap, McKay got me again. I'm like, no, I got to read this thing. Well, that was funny because I was writing. um, Black Cat came back. We did the King of Black uh, tie-in, so Felicia was. Oh, little nor should you, yeah. so Felicia was, you know, stealing Doctor Strange, and I was like, well, you know, I really, really like Doctor Strange. And there's no Doctor Strange series right now, and they haven't announced a Doctor Strange series. So I emailed, you know, Darren, the editor, I'm like, hey, can I write Doctor Strange? <laughs> and he's like, uh, he's like, yeah, sure. I'm like, oh, great, here's my, uh, like, here's, here's my ideas. I sent him off to him. He's like, well, actually, we have a thing that we're going to do. He's like, we've already got plans. I was like, oh, yeah, what's that? He's like, we're going to kill Doctor Strange, and you can write it. It's like, oh. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah, okay. <laughs> So they they had a few things in place, you know. We, we knew Doctor Strange was going to die, and we knew um, we ended the thing with the, uh, the younger version of Strange had been kept in reserve. That was a Tom Brevoort idea. You had to kick him out for a while. I thought it was really elegant. And then we just kind of took it from there, and we killed Doctor Strange. And now we have we have the Sorcerer Sorceress Supreme. 
Or is it Sorcerer? I don't know. If they, is it a sorcerer, it's fine. It's 2022. We've just settled on Sorcerer. It's like yeah, Actor. Sorcerer, and, yeah. sorcerer. Okay, so that's, you know, do you want to say? Because, I mean, like, we're, Sorcerer Supreme is something that is really out of the multi yeah. And it seems weird to imply a human, or even, you know, a carbon-based life form, gender binary. Uh, to the greater multiverse. Fair enough. Uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So we're just, we're just using Sorcerer as a blanket that gender, is gender neutral thing. Perfect. And now she's the Sorcerer Supreme of two universes. Correct. Which suggests she is actually now on a completely different level. Well, which I mean, is... no one's ever done that before. So yeah. we're, get, we're gonna see what that means and see what that looks like. Sounds like a lot of work. I mean, I, I, I don't think it's for it, but it's. I don't think it's a spoiler to imply that it's more of a pain in the ass than you might expect. Yeah. <laughs> Magic in the Marvel Universe are pain in the ass, really? I mean, it's, it's, it's usually just a pain in the ass for the writers, but but now it's also a pain in the ass for the characters. Is it, I mean, because cause that series is starting, what, in, uh, is it in March already? Yeah, March 2nd, so five days. Oh, nice. Strange number um, one, yeah. So, yeah. is it gonna, just going to be her cleaning up? Like, oh, look at the mess Steven left of behind, you know. <laughs> look at the mess everyone made. Yeah. <laughs> the, last, yeah. the last two, three so, guys. Look at the mess they made. I mean, just like, I'm sorry for the train, I look after all these assholes. Like, <laughs> it's just, it's just bringing yeah, the dark dimension so much cool. easier. Like, it's, it's just everyone's horrible and it's a like, chaos dimension. You don't got to do anything. Whereas yeah, Earth, everyone's like, oh, come and bad. save us. Shuna Gora yeah. after attacking. I mean, you're writing so many books now. I mean, you could do, we could just do our own Jen McKay crossover, right? I mean, Moon Knight, Black Cat, uh, Strange. Uh, I've considered it. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably just, the, the hardest part's probably it's trying so to. Like, <laughs> exactly. I was going to say, the hardest part's probably just trying to figure out the scheduling, right? Like when the book sh- is shipped, it's like, okay, I have to write this one first, this one second. Yeah. I mean, I. The scheduling, I just, it's kind of like an afterthought at this point where I'm, like, I just need to get my scripts in. Wow. Um, yeah. So no one's waiting for me. And then eventually they will come out. Mm. Um, like, you it's know. Not your department. I mean, not really. And especially now with, you know, you have, you know, the printers are kind of jammed up with, you know, so many books going in and then there's paper shortages. Actually, I don't think the paper shortages affect us that much. But anyways, uh, Lot, there were a lot of delays going on through the fall and the winter. Um, I think they're, they're getting mostly sorted out now. But like even Devil's Rain Moon Knight got uh, delayed by a week. So. Yeah, I think I think the Spider Man one did too. Yeah, there, I got a couple books this week. I think my guy said it. They were from like December, or January. So yeah, they're they're. I think they're all starting to flow through here now. Yeah, yeah. I think they're just kind of getting it sorted out because I mean, surprisingly, no one. COVID was kind of a kind of a motherfucker is from the uh, comic book industry. Oh yeah, I mean, I remember. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't have a lot to read at that point, at the beginning there. <laughs> like, well, let's get the we're a back issue podcast now. Yes, uh, pretty much. Oh, we were there. We were there. It was <laughs> so. It was fun. I mean, it was it was bad for the industry, but for you, did you kind of enjoy it just because you like I have more time? You know, I have a little more time to write and stuff. Stuff or. No, because if I'm not writing, I'm not getting paid. Yeah, uh, uh, true. <laughs> but I just mean, could you send in scripts and like they'll pay you for it, but they're it's not going to go out right away? Or uh, I mean, up to a certain point, mm. um, like they can only pay, I mean, they make you know it makes sense. They can only pay so far ahead. Yeah. So once I kind of hit that wall, there were a couple months where I just wasn't doing much work. So um, yeah, it was it wasn't great, but you know, I lived in Canada. Or I live in Canada, so I got served. So I could uh, survive. You know, I had savings and stuff like that. But I was I was very happy when we were getting back into production because otherwise I was just kind of like wandering the streets, <laughs> you know, pa- oh, painting no, tiny. Place to well, thankfully, thankfully, you know, painting. I was painting tiny plastic men, and it was just it was getting like some real, uh, you know, like real all work and no play makes. Uh, you yeah, actually had to run to painting your miniatures. That is the. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. That's like oh my goodness. Oh, no time left. <laughs> they're up there. You can't, really, you can't really see them, but yeah. Yeah, I was, I was like, well, I, 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 finally, I finally have time to have a hobby, I guess. That's that's why he writes 20 books a month now, kids. Never again. <laughs> yeah, it's because of the plastic piling up now. The paints are going dry. It's sad. All right, so I know you know, I know you have no inside info on the Moon Knight show, but what is like one aspect of Moon Knight that you, you're like, they better have that in the show. I really want that in the show. 
I mean, I already told you this other cape go like that. So. <laughs> That's all you need. I'm good. Yeah, so, I mean, I don't know. Like, you know, this, the suit looks fun. I think they've got a lot of exciting stuff going on. Oscar Isaac is you know, a great actor, so that's that's sorted. So, I mean, with with these TV shows and movies and stuff, I basically have zero expectations because it's just you know, it kind of is what it is. It's a thing that's going to exist, whether or not it is what I expect it to be. So, I just kind of take it as it comes. And your name better be in the credits. Uh, I I would be surprised. <laughs> People are always like, so are they going to take things from your comps and put them in the, the TV show? I'm like, the, the TV show wrapped before I started writing. Like, uh, the, the, unless they have a time machine, I don't think that's going to happen. What is it? <laughs> I mean, if, if anybody would have a time machine, I guess. So here's a crazy thought. No. And you can you? say, I refuse to answer this on the grounds that it may cause me lots of problems. <laughs> but, uh, you that's said, not a hey, way to, I... That's not a great way to start a question, but okay. <laughs> No, I know, but you know what? The the doors are open. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask it. Mm-hmm. Um, you said you said to them, "Hey, I want to write Doctor Strange." They said to you, "Yeah, hey, we're gonna kill Doctor." <laughs> so oh, cool, I'm gonna write this. And there's a Doctor Strange movie coming out. Mm-hmm. Do you think any of these facts are related? <laughs> oh yeah, I, I have no idea. Um, there we go. Perfect I answer. Mean, I don't. I mean, you'd have to look at. Uh... Old uh, Ben the Cumberbatch's uh, contract, I would guess. See how many movies he's got left on it. Again, it, again, it could yeah, swing. It could swing either way. They could get. They could get rid of Doctor. They could get rid of Doctor Strange at the end, or they could be like, "Oh, hey, Jed, bring Doctor, bring Stephen Strange back." You know, now at the, by the time this movie comes out, you know. I mean, I if, even if, if they Clea yet, so. if they killed Doctor Strange in the movie at the end of like a do- actual Doctor Strange movie, I would be. I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd be, I'd be impressed. That'd be a, that'd be a hell of a swing, be a hell of a swing. That's what I thought. I, I thought think he had that copy of himself from that point in time that he separated out when he was playing with the Eye of Agamotto. But who's who's gonna play the the young man that comes back? Disney has that CGI thing. They could they could de-age oh. him. He it's, doesn't actually have the gray streaks in his hair. I don't believe. Or if he does, they just put in the just for men. You know, it's just for sorcerers. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah, big. there you go. <laughs> just, 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 just dying to use that de aging technology. It's like cut. soon we will not it's need the actors at all. Yeah, you know, a floppy hair in 2010 Benedict Cumberbatch comes strolling out of a portal. <laughs> uh, hey, man, I've heard crazy rumors about that movie. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Oh. Just <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. I mean, they're screaming about Illuminati, so I wouldn't be surprised if uh, there's going to be a Jed McKay Illuminati book coming there right around the corner here soon. Yeah, I don't know about that, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Would you want to write a, an Illuminati book, Jed? Uh, I mean, it's not something I've ever thought about, to be quite honest. Even though, you know, I've got Dr. Strange now. Um, and then, of course, Moon Knight, who uh, should have been on the Illuminati. Would have been a, a, a shockingly bad choice. Um, yeah, I mean... I would have to think about it. It would be certainly difficult, given that you're working with a lot of kind of a, a greater scope than I tend to be used to in comic books. But uh, anyway, I'd, I'd certainly give this a shot for sure. That's all right. He gave me one page of Ben Riley meeting Moon Knight uh, in that Death of Doctor Strange tie-in. I'm good. I'm good for this year. Meeting Ben Riley yeah, again. Yes, great right, Ben Riley again. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, <that hurts> <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, isn't is that what the business is? Oh yeah, I mean, you write a good Spider Man. Would you write a good Spider Man? Would you be interested in like a monthly Spider Man or a mini series or anything? Uh, yeah, like, I mean, I think I think Spider Man is lots of fun, and um, you know, it's I mean, Spider Man is probably one of the, the, the biggest books Marvel has. Um, it's just they put out so many issues. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's that's a lot of work, <laughs> and also uh, like. I don't know, it, it, the Spider-Man fan base is probably second to the X-Men fan base for uh, sort of uh, the, the the venom they bring to the world. <laughs> so, yeah, fair I don't know. Enough, They're fair passionate. I'm, I'm quite happy to work with characters who have like a, a, a relatively smaller fan base that uh, don't get up all all the grill about stuff all the time. Um, people are like, oh, would you like to write an X-Book? I'm like, yeah, but that would be a quick Twitter for sure. 
I mean, it's probably more fun, yeah, writing characters that were like the expectations are a little lower. Like, yeah, like you said, Spider Man, X Men, everyone in their grandma has an opinion on Spider Man. Yeah. And it's always yeah. fucking bonkers. <laughs> I know. You know, yeah, I gotta say, whenever a, a less. Well, uh, uh, whenever a character that is mostly known from their Marvel uh, handbook uh, reference mm-hmm. uh, gets gets name checked, uh, those fans are always very appreciative. So, you know, you put in anybody that you mostly know from the uh, handbook uh, rather than the actual comics, and people are like, yes! Yeah. So I mean, glad like those, they back. But like, those are fun characters to dig up. Um, you know, I really enjoyed bringing Tiger back, for instance, from Moon Knight, because I've, I've always thought Tiger was a really interesting character because there's a period of time where she was, you know, she was in the Avengers, she was all over the place. But for however many years, she just hasn't had a place. Like, there's no way to figure out where to put her. And it's just. The original you know, cat before Patsy Hellcat. There you go. I mean, I've, I've got that issue. Yes. Uh, the one where she fights the, the man bull wasn't on. <laughs> the bull? Anyways, it, it was a guy who had bull horns. It was a whole thing. Yeah, there's a couple of guys like that. But, ah, yeah, yeah. It's, but uh, yeah. It's like a go-to. Him. And I think she's like a really, I think she's a really great character. And having her in Moon Knight is a lot of fun because, you know, she is, she's a daytime creature. She's brightly colored. She's got a lot of energy. She's exciting. And then Moon Knight is, a, you know, a, a grim adventure of the nighttime streets. And it, it's a lot of fun to play these characters off each other. So I'm always kind of looking for characters we can bring back from, you know, obscurity, relative obscurity, and, you know, brush them off, put a new coat of paint on them, and see what people think. I mean, we- so here's a real deep, deep question. You may not have considered it yet. Although I know you mentioned it in the books, is her kid going to come for a visit? Oh, yeah, he'll, he'll be around at some point. Okay, um, so we're going to get, we're going to get Moon Knight in the park and, we're all going to have a nice family day at Central Park. <laughs> oh, so it's coming. Okay. I, I mean, you know, I'm not going to say Moon Knight's going to be his dad. Okay, but, well, uh, no, I mean, that's, that's my you know, own idea. It, it, I don't it, write it, comic books for a living. You have to give me some slack. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, the, this kid has been written out of existence, but, uh, yeah, you know, they, they, they still exist. And there is still. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, there, there is still potential that they will appear and uh, interact with, with their weird uncle. And, and are we gonna get, get a, is, I mean, we see why Tiger, Tiger is there, so, uh, are we gonna get, uh, a, a confrontation with Black Panther at some point? I mean, you'll have to continue to buy the comic. Oh, I was going to either way, but, uh. <laughs> well, we're probably gonna do that. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. a good writer. We're gonna keep on buying, so. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we're, we'll, 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 we'll see what happens on down the line. I can't, uh, can't spell everything out, unfortunately. No, I know. Uh, okay, but yeah, we talked about Moon Knight, Black Cat, we talked about the Doctor Strange stuff. Is there one genre you like writing more than other, any, the others? Like, is the street level stuff your favorite? Is the mystical stuff? Or are you just like, I love it all? I mean, also, I think the street level stuff is kind of my favorite. It's largely where I've worked up till now in Marvel. And even with, you know, Strange, Strange is not a street level book, but it has street level elements. Because a lot of it draws upon my earliest pitch to Doctor Strange prior to the death of Doctor Strange, where I was looking at bringing in more street level elements to Doctor Strange. So, yeah, generally the street level is where I'm most comfortable. Hmm. Um, the higher the power levels get, the more, I wouldn't say uncomfortable, the more unfamiliar I am with uh, the territory. Uh, just because I spent less time with it. Uh, you know, I wrote Avengers Max Strike a little while back, and having the entire Avengers around <laughs> was, uh, uh, kind of a big deal I and mean, something I wasn't used to dealing with. Where normally, you know, the kind of threats you have in a Black Cat book or a Moon Knight book are like a guy with a gun or like a guy with a sword. Whereas that doesn't really mean much to the Avengers. You know, they'll, they'll, have, they'll have the Hulk eat him. <laughs> uh, you know, you know, Thor will just sneeze and that person will die. <laughs> so, you know, for instance, writing Avengers Next Break, I had to come up with you know, a whole new tier of threats. Um, to make it make it credible that not only would the Avengers be um, occupied, but would also be challenged. So um, the, the further we get from the street, the, the kind of more unfamiliar territory I'm in. But uh, I, I am always interested in rising to the occasion, rising to the challenge. 
I mean, I think you're, I think you're getting more comfortable with things. I mean, that last issue of Moon Knight, the whole stained glass Scarlet thing, I was like, oh, what, what the hell is this? I'm like, this is it's like a horror movie. I love it. I yeah. have to say, that was just beautiful. It's funny because that issue, like, that issue came out in February, but like, it's a Halloween story. I wrote it in October. Um, I thought it was at the St. Valentine's Day story. Yeah, shit, that's, that's how I should have, uh, that's how I should have told people now. Um, but, you know, it kind of is. <laughs> it works! It works either way! It's beautiful! It's any time of year! But yeah, like that's that was uh, our, our spooky Halloween story with uh, the stained glass style. That was the scary story that it, it tells. Because you know, people, Moon Knight doesn't have the kind of release value you get from someone like Spider Man. Because Moon Knight kills a lot of the people he meets. Um, so that kind of leaves his enemies thin on the ground. But Stained Glass Scarlet is a character that people really like. I mean, you know, fans were always chanting at the bits, and he wore stained, stained Glass Scarlet. Uh, and obviously, you had to put Stained Glass Scarlet in there. Because A, she was a very popular Moon Knight villain. And B, at the time of writing, she was alive. So that makes her quite special right there. Hmm. Um, but I couldn't really figure out what I wanted to do with Scarlet. Because you know, after Scarlet Redemption, that like five part story, you know, story that uh, Jan David Pace wrote, it kind of put her in a weird place. Also, she may have been dead. I wasn't quite sure. Um, so I wanted to find a different angle for Scarlet. And then that sort of, you know, Bloody Mary, Candyman kind of thing just really just kind of like, you know, slotted in. It, it worked. So that's it. That's what we ran with. Oh, yeah. I mean, I thought you did it perfectly. I was like, oh, you know, nice power upgrade. And like I said, very horror-esque vibes, which, again, I mean, more, <laughs> you know, you call Moon Knight a street level thing. But I mean, it's very, your run's been very, super, you know, vampires, very supernatural from day one. So, yeah. But I mean, I also think supernatural street level go, uh, go hand in hand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And like, well, I think that's, and... I think it's one of the, the arenas where supernatural works the best. Any kind of street level stuff, because like the the more the higher the kind of power level, if you have the Avengers fighting, you know, Shima Gorath or something, it's less of a supernatural story and more of a cosmic story. Whereas I think the supernatural elements and the horror elements work best with characters that have less power to deal with. It. And, you know, the same way with any horror movie where you see the protagonist is somebody who's always on the back foot, somebody who's not prepared for the the situation they find themselves in. So you would rather, and, so you'd rather do like a stained glass Scarlet or even Zodiac or any of them over like a Doctor Doom or something. I mean, what, what's Doctor Doom going to do with Moon Knight? You know, <laughs> they did it in the nineties. That's all they did it in the nineties. They tried to yeah. squeeze that in in the nineties. One 90s. thing I will say, one thing I do want to say here is just, and this is what I thought was beautiful about the stained glass Scarlet story is you make this point of you know the gods are just stories. And there are older stories, and you're a new story. Mm -hmm. And, you know, yeah, I'm, you know, Kanchu isn't at his full power, but neither are you. You're still a new story. Yeah. But you're not going to die here either. Yeah. It's like this is just one more myth to be told on that street level. And that's just, it is just beautiful the way you build that cosmology into it. Um, in a world with real gods, this idea that yes, you can just speak that humans just speak these deities into existence is really a fascinating idea, and it's something that is, you know, as a real deep cosmology nerd of Marvel comics, the fact that it like I see it weaving through a lot of stories, um, it makes me feel so happy. No, I like that. And too. so I really love what you did there. I really love the way that you handle the, these beings that, even if they are street level, are still street level, that the street level is still part of the cosmos. Yeah. So every story is in, is a cosmic story because it happens to the cosmos. Sure, but I mean, we're also talking about belief and, you know, where exactly. you see belief in, more, in a more defined form or more refined form than on the streets. Yeah, and but that's, that's the thing. And it was... It really, it really spoke to me as a fan of that. So I'm sorry. I'm just, I just wanted to no, say. No, no, it's. <clears throat> but I mean, again, I think those things are you know go hand in hand. Because when you talk about belief and talk about stories, you know, these are the stories that are told from person to person. And you know, 
when you're talking about street level stuff, it's very, very much about person to person communication, person to person interaction. You know, really, really. The, the yeah, words the prophets are written on uh, subway walls and tenement halls, right? So, all right. Any, <clears throat> any other questions for this man, or should we let him get back to painting his miniatures? <laughs> All right. I mean, I could talk to him all night. But oh, I know. I, I'm sure he. I'm sure he doesn't want to talk to me all night. So <laughs> oh, I will be the better person and say, "Don't, don't sell yourself short. You're a catch." Oh. Really, <laughs> oh, thank you. you don't want that in the drop. <laughs> oh, I'll get all the drops. Uh, oh yes, please. Oh yes, uh, it, Jed. Considering what the, the last guy said about me, that's that's a good. One. Oh come uh, on! It's a badge of honor. Peter David called you a dumbass. Come on. <laughs> Wow, Peter David out here throwing hands down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so yeah, we'll take the next twenty minutes. Uh, Mr. Jen McKay, what uh, comics do you want people to go out and buy? Where can they find you? Social media, plug whatever you'd like. Yeah, I can be found at uh, twitter.com dot McKay J E D M A C K A Y. I've got several books coming out now. We have Moon Knight currently ongoing, uh, issue number nine. Comes out on March second, uh, as well as Strange Number One, the first of a uh, ongoing new series featuring Chris Strange, the Sorcerer King of Earth, as well as the Dark Dimension. Uh, similarly, we have Magic the Gathering Number No Number Fourteen. No, wait, hang on. Sorry, Number Twelve. Number Twelve. Uh, I'm losing track of all the numbers uh, of the books that I write because uh, there's a lot of them. I don't forget the numbers. Yes, Magic the Gathering Number Twelve. Uh, it's coming out as well. It's the second issue of a whole brand new season uh, that uh, setting up a whole new status quo. It's very exciting. Uh, as well, we've got Devil's Night Moon Knight, number one, uh, coming out the week after. And then uh, some Spider-Man stuff coming out. Uh, Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man 92, I believe, uh, as well as Amazing Spider-Man 92.day, or B-E-Y. Uh, so yeah, a lot of stuff going on, but I uh, hope people will check out Strange Number One. I think it's going to be a fun new series, and I hope uh, people are excited for it. And that's it. So you're so you're writing ninety two Amazing Spider Man ninety two and ninety two. I say Bay two ninety two point Bay. Uh, yeah, that's kind of how it shook out. Um, Penultimate stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. Nick, Nick Lowe kind of gets at me whenever he needs someone to fill in for something because uh, I am relatively fast. So. <laughs> He's like, hey, can you give me like 15 pages with Monica Rambeau in a Spider-Man story by Friday? I'm like, sure. Yeah, I can do that. Oh, I, I know. Toward, towards the beginning of that, we, caught, we talked to Kelly Thompson. And, uh, you know, she was like, yeah, they, you know, the, that whole Beyond board, they kind of parceled out, yeah. you know, who's going to do which issue. And we're like, oh, we're going to do this one. And she's like, oh, no, Jed McKay uh, gobbled up every other, everything else that the rest of us <laughs> didn't. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just here getting emails. <laughs> But hey, yeah. man, hey, everyone must love it. Hey, everyone loves your work. I mean, they keep coming back to you for all this stuff. So, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, I've, I've been lucky. Like I said, you know, I'm the cable for a chance. All right. But yes, thank you so much. Uh, like I said, you've been on our uh, bucket list for the longest time. Uh, thank you for, well, happy, uh, happy to be here. Thank you for bringing on for such a, uh, a landmark episode. Thank you. And, uh, in advance, thank you for the, uh, Moon Knight, uh, Alpha Flight, uh, crossover. I know it's coming soon. You know what? Both both of those being such eighties characters, I guarantee you they cross over at some point. They had to. Have. There's yeah. a moon in Canada. I'm just saying. <laughs> Actually, we have two of them here. Oh, it's very, it's very special. Uh, you yes, guys one's French and one's it. English. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Unless yeah. you're on the west coast, very romantic. Chinese. Well, there you go. Um, yeah. But yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, every time I'm, you know I'm doing moon night, I have to look to make. Kind of figure out when he would cross over with other characters. And he's met like freaking everybody. Because the 80s, they're just like, we'll just throw all these characters and see if they sell some comic books. Wow. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, we were friends with uh, Ray and everyone over at Into the Night, so. Yeah. And, uh, and, and of course, uh, you know, Tomes of Evil. Yes, uh, Tomes of Evil, also our friends, yeah. yes. Yeah, the, uh, the, the number one fans of uh, Man Man Marco. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, well, okay. Charlie yeah, also. Fine. Charlie over there also. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, We're going to have to wrestle in Jello for the title. Mutual, mutual fan. Charlie will do the talk. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I won't say I'm the number one fan of Man Man Marco. I'm just saying I'm always there when he shows up. You're you're the number one oh. fan of Otto Octavius, Charlie. Come on. You uh, you, you want to be there for uh, Devil's Night Moon Night number one because uh, 
the CL triple M then. Oh. Yeah, I heard you on Into the Night. You said, Just is it. Please is... tell me you were gentle with them. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, wait, 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 at least meet Moon Knight. Or, <laughs> is he generally gentle with them? No, I understand that. Look, all I'm saying, don't make him a jerk. <laughs> Just make him a big idiot. That's all I want for my poor man, Mountain Marco. <laughs> okay. I, I, I heard there's some. I heard there's some kind of mystery about who his cellmate is. So, mm, I, there is speculation. No. Uh, well, we're gonna see it. I will. I will tell you this. Hey, if Man Mark Marco got a, if he's got lore, I'm there for it. I love it. <laughs> he got eaten by a dragon once, and he still came back. So that's why Man Mark Marco, I to mean, me, is the last surviving existing being in the Marvel universe. I mean, like with a name like that, you can't get rid of them permanently. Yeah. It's like, um, you know, it's like, like Man Slaughter Marsdale, who I think very much is the kind of counterpart to Man Mountain Marco, uh, as far as yeah. she, she's very evocative, very like 1965 name. It's the swagger. I... All right. <laughs> oh, why? I'm, I'm sorry. I was a huge fan of the Zodiac story when it first came out in. In Dark Rain, so it's ah uh, yes, oh Dark Rain. There's yeah. just so much with what you're doing right now that I'm like, I didn't even realize. That. Oh my gosh, that's the same Zodiac. Ah! Yeah, but uh, I was, I was, I mean, I guess I wasn't surprised. I was quite pleased. You know, no one guessed that it was uh, the Zodiac as the uh, mysterious antagonist. Yeah. But I mean, granted, uh. that's, that would be a hell of a guess. <laughs> The guy, has appeared, well, the, guy, the guy has appeared for five issues over the entire span of his life. <laughs> but he is, again, it's just a great character as he plays out, you know, mm-hmm. because he is just, oh, yeah. I mean, I, he's, just, like, he's, he's just a real piece of shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, well, he, he is, like, well he's you know, not, at least he recognizes irre- that the universe is off. Yeah, he's completely irredeemable. There's no... Yeah. No, like redeeming virtues whatsoever. Wait, well, hey, that's I mean, the that's, that's, that's the best guy. You know, no one's gonna care if Moon Knight cuts his face off. I, mean, I, guess, I guess we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> what a bag of rumors said anyways. <laughs> oh, we're gonna go. Well, we've three people in the series wear bags over heads now, so <laughs> no, I just need Zemo in here. <laughs> I mean, or oh, any hopefully you don't like Zemo. You introduce Moon Knight to an actual honest god Nazi, then that's gonna be. Uh, a real difficult situation. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. We're all excited about, about the issue. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him teasing all this stuff. All right. Mr. Jen McKay, thank you. You have been a delight. Uh, oh, it's been a lot of fun. Thank you for having me on. I mean, maybe we'll have to do this again at a future point. Hey, maybe that Iron Cat, like I said, we are all big Black Cat fans here. Yeah, well, you know, hit me up. I'm always, uh, always down with Cat. All right, so you said... Uh, that's... Tell your friends we don't bite. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're, we're on stream now. That would be extraordinarily difficult. You'd be surprised. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, hope we didn't scare you too bad. Yeah, I'll live. Like I said, I was on Tomes of Evil. Oh! <laughs> oh, that's a drop, Lil. I survived Tomes of Evil. <laughs> All right. Thank you, sir. I was going to you guys finish recording. Oh, okay. I was just say, you know, I was gonna say, do you want to sit through our drops? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, never mind. I'll uh, I'll split. All right. Uh, yeah. Let's okay. Be All right, guys. All right. Have a good one. Thanks, sir. Take care. <sighs> Great as I thought it'd be. Yeah. That was, I hope we didn't keep him too long. Now I always worry. No, he. I always worry we go too long. No, that that was perfect because he said, you know, can we keep it to like an hour? So that was not, so. Yeah. No, that was perfect. Pretty much you think. So. Andy, Andy took shots at Tomes of Evil. That could not have gone any better. <laughs> I know. Alright, kids. So, yes. Uh, send us your thoughts. How much did you love the Ched- Jed McKay interviewer? Hey, if you're another uh, creator uh, and you want to join us, like next week, next week we got another interview. Clay McLeod Chapman will be back to talk. Uh, He's back, boys! Villains for Devil Brain, Villains for Hire, number two. So, yes. Yeah, so. See, if you got the cre- this is the place to be creators. So email us, capesayunlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. 
And remember, you can follow Capes and Lunatics on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. Find uh, links to all the various social medias for the many, many shows we do. Uh, find the link to the YouTube channel. Uh, again, that Annie Chang interview is burning up our, our YouTube channel. So please subscribe and uh, check out all the interviews and all the other episodes we do. What? Oh, oh, look at him, though. Look at him pulling a little help by. Uh, but yes, uh, most importantly, if you can, subscribe to the Patreon. Uh, get exclusives like early access to creator uh, interviews. Mr. D.G. Chichester every month. A new episode. A new Chichester Chats is about to go up. I got the good mic out for you guys. And, of course, superhero movie brackets. We're going to find the worst superhero movie of all time. Uh, How so- drunk? That's like how is much. It a box of wine or a barrel of whiskey? That's like how much. How much snow are we going to get it in the winter? One inch, three inch. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> to be fair, Charlie, hoist it up. All right, and of course, get there your, we go. Here we are. Get yourself some. Would cap- you like to own a delightful Capes and Lunatic mug or T-shirt or other branded product? Phone cases. Oh. Uh, so yes, kids. You can get and all. Just so you know, just so you know, people, this is metal on the inside. That's right, no cheap so plastic. I know a lot of you look at this. Oh, that's one of those plastic mugs. Listen, that like it cracks three days in. Oh, this is metal all the way through. And yeah, yeah, honestly, like Phil does not sell. This is the thing; he does not sell what the product is. This is a metal mug sheathed in plastic with our. Delightful logo on the outside. Uh, let your friends know where to listen to their informative uh, genre fiction works here at the Cape Moon Things Network. As you drink your still hot coffee or still cold vodka out of your mug. <laughs> but yes, and if you're inquiring, where could I get such wonderful products? Well, you can find everything we just mentioned at Linktree. L A N K T R dot E E slash capes and lunatics. And yes, little by the finger, not that finger, little Hellfire is giving. Yes, it'll be in the show notes on the YouTube, the podcast, all of it. Every show notes. Wherever you're listening to this, just look down. Hail. Little Hellfire. Little Hellfire. Where can people where can people talk to you about rip, uh, uh, cutting men's faces off? Oh, you don't want to know the things I've done. Charlie Hester. Well, like to write to me in the old fashioned email where were mothers and fathers once to do so at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog on one word at gmail.com. And follow me on the Twitters. I live tweet things when I feel like it. <sighs> There's shows, Naomi at 9 uh, on Tuesdays and Legends of Tomorrow on Wednesdays at 8, uh, which are very good shows. Finding the energy. At Charlie Esser, that's C H A R L I E S S E R. But for the two E's in the middle. For what? For quality. Bing! Thank you, Moz. And thank you, Mr. Hey, so, at 250 episodes, we're uncancelable. I'm uncancelable! <laughs> we're uncancelable! Alright, kid. Is he still there? <laughs> But yes, thank you, Mr. Jed McKay, and everyone, all, all you kids, come back next week for uh, Clayton Cod Chapman and Devil's Reign, Villains for Hire, number two. Number two. All right, for another week, we have been your capes. Apple. Ampersand. Not a thing. <laughs> it wasn't me this week. I'm happy. I wrong button. I don't second. care. He was here for Jed McKay. That Hello. is fine. Hey, <laughs> He was here for the Jet McKay, that's fine. Alright. Alright, kids, remember, tell him you heard it here first. Elf of Light Ascending is coming soon. Good night.